Hello, Pastor Doug back again with another video. Today, I want to continue to go through 60 faith questions I hope to answer before my kids leave home. Uh, I like this list. It's a very interesting list because I think these are average questions Christians have. And as always, I when I do these things, I'm going to do them off the cuff. I'm just going to give hopefully quick, direct answers. And so let's go through this. Now, we've gone through the Bible so far. We've gone through prayer. We've gone through the church. And we're doing now serving. And as always, you can play along at home. If I read the question, you hit pause. You can think about how you answer it yourself. So let's do this. What does it mean to serve others? I'm not sure I understand the question. And you might say that's a weird thing, the question, Pastor. Well, I, I'd like to define this serve others thing. Because I think for when this question is asked by modern Christians, modern evangelicals, it really means like, how, do, how am I nice and do random acts of kindness to strangers? Now, there's a place for that. We read throughout the Old Testament, you know, we are to take care of the widow, the orphan, the stranger, the alien. We are to be charitable to everyone. We're even to call to love our enemies. 100% true. But that word serve has a very different meaning in our modern vocabulary than it has done historically, and I think in the Bible. If you ask this question a few hundred years ago to a pastor, they'd say, well, Obviously, the Lord has put you under authority of some folks. You are called to serve those people who are above you. Children serve your parents. Wives serve your husbands. Husbands serve your bosses. Citizens serve the magistrate. Uh, parishioners serve your church leaders. Now, we don't think like that. We don't have that category of authority and structure, which, by the way, the Bible clearly, clearly teaches. And so God, the, the old answer would be, well, those whom you are under obligation to, make sure you do your job. Make sure you serve them well and cheerfully and do it fully. Now, I know this is not a popular answer, but there's a real wisdom here because there's a danger, I think, in modern evangelicals, and I've seen this, that like, you know, I want to look, I want to work on being a really kind and generous person serving the stranger or serving the other and they ignore the people whom God has given them that they are first to love. You know, it, it's like a man who says, you know, I want to work on being charitable to the poor. So I'm going to go work at the soup kitchen and totally ignore my wife and my children. Now, you can work at the soup kitchen, 100%. That's a good thing. But who do you have first obligations, duties to, whether to serve or to guide, you know, whether you're in a subordinate or a leadership role? So... How, what does it mean to serve others? Well, you first do what you're commanded to do, those around you. And that means you have to understand the law. You know, love God, love your neighbor. For now, we're not talking about the love of God. He technically is an other. We're called to serve God. But let's just talk about on the neighbor, because I, th I think this is where this question is focused on. Okay, how do you love your neighbor? Well, if you want a guide, go to the last six of the Ten Commandments and do them. And so you can do them in a narrow way. Thou shall not murder. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to murder my neighbor. <laughs> that would be bad. And then you expand them and you broaden them. It's like, okay, I, I can't murder my neighbor. I can't assault them either. I, I, I can't be unjustly angry against them. You know, I, I, I'm not to do them violence. But then if you read the great creeds of the Protestant church, uh, like the, for instance, uh, the Westminster Catechisms do this. They take the cat, they take the commandments that are usually put the negative, and they flip it around. Okay, so I can't murder my na neighbor, I can't assault my neighbor, but how do I promote my neighbor's life? Well, again, you go and do you do works of charity. You do unto others that they would have them do unto you. But again, I would really caution before you run out and try to focus on others. Make sure you're doing your duty to those whom God has put around you, those who are either in your charge or those who you are to be subordinate to. So let's do number two. What are, what are ways to serve others? I think I just did that. I, I think the Ten Commandments and running through them is an appropriate way and understand on those whom the Lord has put in your path. Number three, what kind of major deeds are there, major needs, sorry, are there in our area? That's interesting because that's something I'm pondering. I, I just started a new church and we're in a new town, and I'd like to have the church work on 
uh, service projects? That's a question I'm actually currently asking. But you notice how, again, serving is focusing beyond those around you. And again, there yes, there's a place for that, but oh, be so careful. So that depends on the area. I mean, but the main thing you're supposed to do is love God, love your neighbor. It's not about necessarily doing great acts of wonderful charity. Now, if you're called to that, that's fine. But the Lord's concerned with those small things. You know, again, let's focus on God. Are you going to church on Sunday? Are you listening to the sermon? Are you obeying his word? Uh, you know, are, are, are you, if you have extra time, giving it into the church? Are you loving those around you? Are you, uh, as a husband, are you loving your wife? Are you providing for your family? Are you guiding your children? Those are the major needs in your area. And yes, if you come across someone, you know, you drive down the road and you see someone broken down on the side of the road, you know, you go and you help them. And you, if you're a man, if you're a woman, be a little more cautious. Those are the things you're supposed to do. And, you know, it's not about, you know, doing grand works of charity. Again, if you think you're called to that and you and that's an appropriate call, and yes, and the church gives its blessing unto that. But it's those little boring things that the Lord is concerned about. You know, how do you daily treat your neighbor or those people you come across as you live this life? What, um, let me see, what kind of major needs are there in your, needs are there in your country? Again, the focus on trying to do something epic. Be a good citizen. <laughs> you know, that's the most important thing this country needs or any country needs. Be a good, lawful citizen. You know, I think it's one of the reasons Jordan Peterson is so famous. You know, go clean your room. We've taught a whole generation of people that they have to be epic and life-changing forces in this world. No, you don't. The Almighty and the law is concerned about the little things. So be a good citizen. You know, treat your citizens well. If you get called for jury, or jury duty, go and do it. Do those things of citizenship. All right, what's number five? What kind of major needs are there in other areas of the world? Oh, I want to say don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> now, again, for the church, you know, there's a place for world missions. But why are you so focused on the big picture and not focusing on those whom the Lord has given you. You know, I mean, if you want to give unto, I don't know, some charity that is helping poor children in Africa, that's fine. You know, if you want to go to Africa and you have the time, the resources, that's appropriate to help poor children, you know, fine. I'm just going all 19th century here, um, you know, to, to, to give an example. But what the Lord is concerned is that you love your wife and you love your children. Are you raising your children in a godly way? Are, are you reading your scriptures to the children? Are your children? Are you taking your children to church? Are you catechizing, uh, educating your children in the way of the Lord? That is far more important. That is what the law of God is concerned with. Not trying to go with these big picture things, which there's a danger of escapism in that. Because, you know, in one sense, that's easy. I fly in a plane, go over a couple weeks to a mission trip in Africa, build an orphanage, and fly back. Okay, that's nice, and I'm totally ignoring my child. That just drives me crazy. Again, doing it wrong. Focus upon those whom God has given in your life and those whom you do come across in this life. Number six, what is the relationship between witnessing for Jesus and serving specific needs? Um, okay. Uh I, again, I, I'm assuming this question is going to focus on the individual, not the church. I, again, we, we, which is such a modern thing, such a modern evangelical thing, we immediately focus on the individual, as opposed to how does the church should do mission, how the church should do missions, which is a very important question, but that's going to, go to give us off on a tangent. N not everyone is called to be a missionary. Not everyone is called to be a preacher. I mean, those are things the church has to ordain and have authority over. Now, obviously, you should have a right of defense for the hope that was within you. So, yeah, I mean, if you have the chance to tell someone about Christ, to speak of your faith in Christ, to say that you're a Christian, by all means, do that. However, you do works of charity to your neighbor because God commands it and they need it. 
you know, if you're kind of doing the bait and switch, I, I have problems with that. Oh, there's my next door neighbor. I'm going to be nice to them so I can give them a track. I, uh, that's a very modern you know, 19th century, 20th, 20th century way of doing things. You are kind to your neighbor and you engage in loving your neighbor because God commands, commands it and they need it. You know, your neighbor house burns down, so you invite them to come stay in your guest room until they get their feet, uh, the feet back on the ground because that's the kind and charitable thing to do. You don't do that as a means of like, I'm going to be charitable to them solely because I can now tell them about Jesus. No, you're kind to your neighbor. And by all means, when you have the opportunity, proclaim Christ. Bear witness to your hope that you have in Christ. You know, praise his name. But we moderns tend to just goof up these categories because we don't understand how to rightly divide law and gospel. So what's next? How can I put others first daily? Well, again, I'm back to my, my um, what I said. The Lord has put people in your path, and they are either under your authority or you are called to be submissive to them, and therefore you give them the honor and do and labors which is pleasing to God and which you are called to do. So, you know, again, I'll focus on the man. You know, love your wife. Take care of your wife. Provide for your wife. Watch over your children. Train your children in the way of the Lord. Go and work hard at work, giving a full day's work to your boss, because this is due unto him. Be a good citizen. That's how you put others first daily. Again, you notice there's a theme here. I, I, I think what I'm hearing here is modern evangelicalism about trying to do something special, trying to do something unique to almost prove to yourself that you're a good Christian. And there again, there is opportunities to do that, but I'm repeating myself, don't miss the people whom God has put in your lives and actually he has commanded you have relationships with. Focus on them. And from that will become a habit of charity and mercy that you can do on the stranger or maybe special circumstances. You know, again, if you're not loving to your wife and loving to your children and loving to your employees or your boss, why are you running out to do some special missions trip? You know, focus on the small. Don't worry about the grand. Well, I hope this made sense. Um, I would love, this would probably be inter more interesting if I could have the conversation with the person who created these questions. I mean, they're good questions, they're interesting questions. But when someone asks a question, and, and that applies to everyone, you can see their biases. And I, I hear a lot of modern Christianity here. Um, and you really need to understand the law. Let me conclude by, again, I strongly recommend you go and get the catechisms, you know, uh, Westminster Shorter, Larger Catechisms. I believe the Heidelberg Catechism does it. And look how it describes the Ten Commandments. And it beautifully unpa unpacks the Ten Commandments. Again, going from the bare minimal to expanding it to doing the opposite and the positive. Um, give you one more example. You know, thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay, I can't sleep around if I'm married. All right, I can't engage in fornication. God hates that. Well, expand that. Well, okay, God hates sexual sin. You know, no, no, don't do pornography, things of that nature. You know, try to fight lustful thoughts. But then flip it around to the positive. How do you promote chastity? How do you promote purity? How do you encourage that which is right? That is a beautiful thing. Remember, the law is two basic things. Love God, love your neighbor, and then go to the Ten Commandments if you need some more, um, if you need some more guidance. But always remember, your hope is not in the law. Your, ho your hope is not in yourself. Your hope is in the gospel and Christ crucified. Well, I hope that helps. As always, Christ's grace and peace to you all. Amen.